Well guys, race season is over and I have a lot of race boats to build. So it's time to get going. Here we go. The first thing that I gotta do is tear down the 146. It is dirty. I'll spin the phone around and show you. It is just filthy dirt, oil, grime. There's uh, there's weeds in here. It's all oily and dirty up and under the bow. So this boat is going to get tore down to nothing today. It's surprisingly quick on the, how that process goes. You take the seats out, take all these uh, carbon fiber panels come off. That makes working on it way easier. So my goal today on this boat is to get the sides off, the engine out, the seats out, the roll cage out, the steering out, the reverse. Pretty much everything is gonna come out of this boat today except for the pump. That's a little bit more involved and if I make some good time, I might try to get the pump out or at least start it on that that's a process. It, they're glued and bolted in. So you gotta take all the bolts out and then you gotta put heat into to break that bond with the uh, with the marine adhesive. It's a pain in the butt, honestly. I hate it, but uh, gotta do it. So I probably won't get that far. That's gonna be step one is to get this thing tore down. So then all those components are gonna go in the, uh, the original 907 hull uh, for my neighbor, Chris. He's the uh, newest team member and it's gonna be running all the same equipment, the same motor. Uh, different pump, seats, cage, everything is going to go into that hole that's out in the uh, driveway that I showed you. So it's time to get going. Here we go. take long i'm not racing i'm not timing myself but that really didn't take long and the boat's already transformed got the seats out the head uh, the rest out and the sides the reason i do that it's probably pretty obvious it opens everything else up so it makes makes it much easier to access all the stuff that's inside the boat but you can kind of see now some of the insides of uh of this thing that probably haven't seen before so I don't know where I'm going to start next. I'm probably going to just start, I, I kind of break it down into sections. Like I'm going to probably pull all the fuel out, starting with the carb, take the carb off, seal up the uh, intake manifold so I don't get crap in it. Uh, take the carburetor off, take it inside, take all the lines out, the, the fuel feed and vent lines, as well as the throttle cable. And that way I'm just kind of focusing on one component, the throttle system. Then I'll work on the oil system, then I'll work on the water system and, and whatnot. So anyway, I'm gonna keep on going, but uh, I don't know what that was, five, 10 minutes and pretty good progress already. Got the FST carburetor off, the throttle cable, the spacers on the manifold, the headers, the breathers, and uh, I'm doing this, like I said, it opens everything up. I'm just kind of, it's, it's kind of a, it doesn't really need explaining, but this is where we're at. Good progress, haven't even taken too long at all, but uh, this is where it starts to get dirty. <laughs> it's It gets kind of gross the, the deeper you go down, like down here behind. The fuel tank, that's just nasty uh, kind of oil, dirt, mix, grass, whatever. It's just kind of nasty. But anyway, I'll just keep on plugging along. Probably should have done this already. First thing you always got to do, disconnect your battery terminals. Because as soon as you start touching stuff around, things will start arcing and it's just bad. So that's been my lesson learned over the years. 
uh, not a big deal so far just because I haven't touched anything electrical, but that's next. So before I dig into there, first thing is to disconnect your battery terminals and then uh, then go from there. So it doesn't have a very big electrical system on it. Honestly, this is the, uh, the extent of a, a battery on and off switch. This is my ignition switch and starter button. This here is the solenoid to run the uh, oil accumulator in there. So we, uh, when we start up, that thing uh, opens up, shoots oil into the engine, so you never have a dry start. And you also have some pressurized oil reserve back there if you ever have an issue with that. So that is the extent of our electrical system. These are actual mechanical gauges, a mechanical temperature gauge, and a mechanical oil pressure gauge. That's it. I am a big, uh, and then a, a little go-kart tachometer that really hasn't worked all summer. <laughs> We'll talk more about that later in the uh, the new build. We're going to get a data logger anyway. This uh, here goes the electrical system teardown. That's the entire electrical system. <laughs> Not a lot to it, really. The uh, this is our little little tack that I tried. It's I think it's a go kart track. The thing was awesome. It's small. It's light. It's simple. But uh, something was going on with it every time the engine started. The the reading would go out. So we really didn't have a tack most of this summer. This is my entire center panel with a. Uh, all out. It's there's not a lot to to it, and that is the way I like it. I don't like all the sensors and all that stuff, but we, I do think that we're going to go to a data logging system. But anyway, making progress, so that's going to make room to get the uh, the fuel tank out, and then my water exit, my water inlets back here. They wide, so they go to each side. Had to pull one of them off to get the starter cable off of there, and before you know it, this engine will be out of here, and making good progress. The only other electrical component is our jumper battery. I just run a real small lithium ion battery. So we put a, um, a battery on the boat trailer, plug it in here, it goes straight, straight to the uh, starter. So that, uh, so that we don't ever really put a, no alternate or anything like that. So the lithium battery just runs our ignition. It does not, it's not really meant to start the boat. It will start it maybe sometimes, <laughs> but uh, that's why we run that battery. This engine is ready to come out, believe it or not. That didn't honestly take long at all, but uh, made some good work. Uh, everything is out. It's just a big giant mess. It always is, but uh, took the water out. The oil accumulator came out over here. It's over there on the ground. Uh, disconnected the drive line. Uh, what else? Uh, the jumper um, cables off there. All I got to do is eight engine mount bolts and... The thing should lift out. <laughs> There's always one thing that we forget to do or I forget to do. Uh, I'm just looking here. I think it's good to go. So eight engine mounts and this thing's gonna come out of here. But um, in my little two car garage, I don't have a lot of space for my overhead hoist. So I'm going to pull the boat out in the driveway and get the engine out out there. Once that's out, uh, I'm just going to degrease the whole thing, throw some Dawn in there and let it soak and get the pressure washer out and get this uh, thing all nice and tidied up. So here, here, here comes the engine. Well, that's it. The, uh, the engine is out. It, it went pretty good. I, I think that might be the first time I ever actually went to lift and had all the lines off and nothing else. No oil, no water, no fuel lines were still connected that I didn't know about. So the 
The engine is out. The boat is a disgusting, <laughs> it, it's, it's just nasty. So I'm gonna pull it out in the, in the uh, driveway and spray some Dawn in here and some other degreasers. Get this thing all nice and cleaned up. This hole is actually gonna go get sidelined for a bit. But I, the only other thing I gotta do is get the roll cage out and and the pump. So who knows? I'm making pretty good time. Uh, disconnect the steering, all that stuff. But that's all kind of tied in with the roll cage, as you can see. So not a whole lot left, but all the major components are out, making pretty really good progress. And uh, before you know it, all this stuff is gonna go into that boat right there. So that's my goal is to get this thing cleaned up. Uh, have all the components out and pull that hole back over here and we'll start placing stuff to see where I these are not the same um, engine bears that are in that boat and they're gonna have to have some modifications done to make this thing fit but those are things we're gonna have to sort out once we get to that point so making good progress not much left of the old 146 it is completely torn down to just the bear hole and the pump and i was just uh thinking okay i might want to start digging in and get that pump out of there but i changed my mind because that doesn't have to come out until this this hole is ready to go together because that's not being used for anything time critical so i'm going to stop right here and uh start thinking about putting the cage the engine and all that over in that boat so i'm going to make room in the garage for that and get ready to do that but i'm going to wrap this video up here you saw a complete dismantling of a uh, group a sprint boat so that was it pretty much from uh, from a full operating boat that was literally just racing a few days ago till now it's down to absolutely nothing it doesn't take too long to tear it apart it takes a lot longer to put them back together but anyway i'm gonna sign out thanks for watching and uh we'll catch you on the next uh build video is going to be starting to put all those components back in that so make sure you tune in for that i've been getting a lot of positive comments about wanting to see the build process so here it comes mm -hmm.